Okay, in this video, I'm going to take a look at uh, a binomial tree construction. Um, and I have this reference to the GitHub. So I'll just show you the um, where the original code was sourced from. So it's from Podrick, Podrick McEntee. Um, and uh, I, he has here binomial option pricing at least I think this is the one um, so maybe I'll just paste again paste go and the snippet of code I, I used here is consistent with what's outlined um, with this reference with this tree here so it's again it's a Cox Ross Rubenstein uh, option price tree but the interesting aspect here is it sets out um, the structure of the tree now it just so happens um, I've been doing some estimations like this um, manually for a call option uh, so I'll just give you a sense of what I've done in terms of a manual tree I've for instance uh, here I worked out, I just better check, yeah, uh, if these were the parameter inputs for a binomial tree where the stock is, stock price or the asset price is 90, uh, exercise 100, um, time to maturity, 6 months, interest rate 7%, volatility 20%, the cost of carry, so R negative Q is uh, 0 0.01 and the, the time step here equal to 15 um, in that instance right so what I have here is widen this a little bit can't okay but it's actually 7% it would look as would it would appear if the R negative Q okay so just to be our negative q so if uh, the interest rate is equal to seven percent okay so if b is equal to r negative q then that implies that uh, q or we could say yeah q is equal to uh, R negative B right which would imply that the if uh, R is equal to 7% we subtract away um, B then Q would be equal to 6 so if we had these parameters here if R was equal to 7% and B was equal to 0 0.01 then the uh, dividend yield uh, would be equal to 6%. Okay, so either ways we have these parameters and then I had a little function that worked out the from those Cox-Ross-Rubenstein parameters the value of P, the value of U, so the up-down and then the discount rate. Again, that's a little bit difficult to manage here. Right. discount rate zero nine nine seven seven so the discount rate uh, uh, per step per time period okay so if I change this to 100 for instance then um, if I change this I better enable content continue if I change this to 100 then the value of the tree this is the stock price tree and the stock price tree is equal to 100 and you can see that the stock price tree is recombines right for Cox Ross Rubenstein tree uh, it recombines now I'm gonna go 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 back to 90 here 90 90 nine zero and we go back to 90 okay 
and this tree here, the, these numbers here, um, are linked, if you like, to the date in the tree, right? So this area here of numbers, I graphed, and I get a a, a, rep a visual representation of the tree. Okay, and that's been useful for my anal our analysis um, as uh, I investigate a little bit binomial trees. Now, one of the nice features uh, associated with the this particular code is it does all this automatically. Okay, so let's just investigate it a little bit and compare like against like. I've set the project up already in um, Jupyter Notebook. So, and I've just directly, all I've basically done is in a very kind of um, just copied and pasted the material in. Um, into the Python uh, editor here. Okay, so I hold down the shift button, I hit return, I do the same, and I get this output. Now there's something not quite right, so let's try that. Shift, enter. Was working before, it's not working now. Let me just investigate. Leave. Okay, so I'll try again. Launch. And I'll go into where I have the file. OneDrive. And it's Python. And then I'm just looking for this folder. And I'll just open up and run. Okay, so uh, I'm actually missing something. No, it's the wrong one. So I'll close this. It's this one. Right, and no, it's not working. So I'll try it again. It must be missing something. Line 2. Okay, I'll try it again. Okay, now this time it seems to have worked. It's just indentation was wrong, would appear. Okay, so I'll run this again. Uh, call down the shift button, enter. And I get this tree, right, with five steps. Five steps. And then I get a, a stock price tree for five steps and for 17 step tree. So that's useful. And come down again. Right, and shift enter, and I get a new tree, and this time uh, it's for 17 uh, steps, and it's, it, again it's a stock price tree. Okay, and I'll shift enter, shift enter, shift enter. Okay, and for, so what do I have? This time it's S is equal to 100, K is equal to 100, risk-free rate is 5%. So what I could do is just redimension the screen, right, redimension, and just compare directly with the Excel. So I'm going to take put the same parameter values here, take these parameter values and enter here. Okay, so we get 90. And exercise remains the same. The risk-free rate is 5%. Um, risk-free rate is equal to, um, let me see, risk-free rate is equal to 7. Okay, so 7. And then the volatility is 30. I'm going to put here the volatility of 20. So 20%. The time period I've set here equal to 6 months. So 0 0.5. Instead of 17, I'm going to put in 
15. And okay, but I have no dividend yield, would look like. Okay, so um, in the situation of no dividend yield, I'll have to make one change over here to my tree. So in that instance, if the interest rate was 7 and we want to make uh, no dividend yield, we would have to set this to 7% as well. That would mean Q would go to 0. Okay, and we come back into um, our uh, Jupyter Notebook environment. Uh, PC0, which I think is taken to imply that it's a call up. PC1, if I can just check one of those denotes call put. Okay, and we can check which one it is. Let's come down. Okay, so it looks like we get a call option here, right? So PC is equal to zero, I think implies it's a call. Okay, so it's basically the same parameters here as here. Uh, no dividend. Uh, Dividend should be zero. Okay, so this uh, B should be equal to zero to get a dividend of zero. And uh, B is equal to, uh, actually, B should be equal to 0 0.07. So we have a dividend of zero. Okay, let's compare. And then let's uh, shift and enter. Okay, and you can see 90, 90, 90. Okay, so it's recombining 90, 90. Now we get uh, 93. It's, if we can open it up, can we go more than two decimals? Okay, the output here is just giving us one decimal. Um, but uh, we're basically um, replicating this code, if you like, is then useful uh, for replicating the table here, right? or giving us some kind of visual of what the uh, stock price tree looks like. Okay, but of course it's reversed 83, 96, 96. We have 100, okay, 100. 93, 93, 86, 86, and uh, 80. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be rounding up uh, here. And then the value of the option, we get, okay, 254, um, and here 2, and 3, and 1, 3, and 1. So, okay, it gives us some kind of visual. Again, the there's a little bit more um, uh, in Excel. We can manipulate a little bit better and uh, adjust the size of the, the width of the columns and so on. And um, we don't necessarily have that here, uh, but still not too bad. Uh, could be useful as well. Okay, so I'll stop there.